The AGM-65 Maverick is an extremely powerful and accurate air-to-ground missile that is very versatile and fun to use. This video will cover how to use them in pre-mode on the DCS F-16 Viper. Let's start! Starting off, I'm coming here with the assumption that you're already familiar with the Lightning Targeting Pod and its operation. If you're not, make sure to check my guide on it linked at the top right side of the screen right now and in the description. But if you are, let's move right on. Other than the buttons you need to operate the TGP, the only other button you need to bind is WPN REL button depress. This is the weapon release button, which is the big red button on the stick which releases the weapons. And so now let's take a look at the armament options we have with Mavericks on the F-16. Mavericks can only be mounted on stations 3 and 7 on the wings. We have four different variants of the AGM-65 that we can put on the F-16. The AGM-65K or Kilo with the large warhead and TV sensor. The AGM-65H or Hotel with the smaller warhead and TV sensor. The AGM-65G or Golf with the large warhead and IR sensor. And finally the AGM-65D or Delta with the smaller warhead and IR sensor. They all work very similarly except the H and K with the TV sensor cannot be used during the night while the D and G variants with the IR sensor rely on heat being emitted from your target. With that, the only difference between the large and smaller warhead is that you can take up to 3 from the small warheads on each wing bringing the total to 6, while from the larger warheads you can only take 1 on each wing. For most ground targets the smaller warheads are more than enough. The only use case that I can think of the top of my head for the larger warheads is if you're going against ships. For this video I'm going to put 3 times of the smaller warhead IR sensor deltas on station number 3 and 3 times of the smaller warhead with the TV sensor hotels on station number 7, as well as a lightning targeting pod on station 5 right, and let's rearm. Request re and I'll also begin the startup procedure. While this is happening, I must thank you all for first of all 1000 subs, as well as 1500 subs, and it keeps going up. It's been going up so fast that I didn't even get a chance to make a video about it. Thank you all, thank you all so much. I've got so much more in store for you in the future, let's keep this going. And if you're new here, welcome. If you like what I've got going on here, make sure to like, subscribe and ring that bell, as well as check out the channel. During your startup, don't forget to give power to the lightning targeting pod by turning on the right hardpoint. Something important to take note of is that Mavericks take roughly 3 minutes to start up and I want them ready before I take off. So to turn them on, go into the air to ground mode and on the SMS page press power on. And then you can get out of air to ground mode and I'll just finish up the startup. And let's start moving. Now that I'm done with the startup, I need to boresight these Mavericks. I'll go through this process quickly, but if you're looking for a full tutorial, check the video linked at the top right side of the screen right now and in the description for a full bore sighting tutorial, and afterwards you can come back here. As I explained in my Maverick bore sight video, you need something to lock on like this truck right here and we'll use just it for it right now. So I'll just go through it quickly to bore sight your Mavericks, you need to set your master arm to simulate and enable ground jettison. Go into air to ground mode and I just remembered that I made a prime example of a mistake that is very easy to make. I only turned on the deltas, I forgot to turn on the hotels, so while we're board signing the deltas I'll let the hotels start up. But while we're here I'm gonna switch from viz mode to pre mode and go to the targeting pod. Now on the other MFD I'll replace the flickers page with the WPN or weapon page. And back to the TGP, select and immediately deselect SP. Soy the targeting pod by pressing display management switch down. Might need to give it a couple presses until it actually soys. And slew it onto that truck or any other object you're going to use for the board siding. There we go, here's our truck. Let's go to black hot. And now press target management switch up to spee it. And right back to the Mavericks, I'll press display management switch down to saw it, slew it over the target. If it becomes hard to see the reticles, press right here to switch from hot over cold to cold over hot. Press target management switch to lock it up, and if you get the shaking reticles, 
of a valid lock, press BSGT. And I've now sorted the delta variance on my station number 3, as indicated at the bottom left right here with 3 boxed. Press target management switch down. And now, I'll go to the SMS page and switch to the hotel variance on station number 7. Back to the TGP. Saw it again with display management switch down. Again, I'll press target management switch up to go into point track. Go to the Mavericks and press display management switch down to saw it. Move it onto the same point. Press target management switch up to lock it up. If you get the shaking reticles, press BSGT. And now I have board sided the Mavericks on station number 7, which are the hotel's variant. Target management switch down to undesignate. Soy the TGP. Target management switch down twice to bring it back to your currently selected steer point. And you can switch from manual handoff to automatic handoff, which will automatically tell your Maverick to lock up when you designate with the TGP. Now I'll turn off ground jettison and move the master arm back to off. Get out of earth to ground mode and just double check that the TGP is on standby for takeoff. Alright, so I'm heading into the target just under 18 and a half miles out of it and I'll get into the air to ground mode and turn on the master arm. Now let's look quickly at the HUD symbology for these Mavericks. As some of you may notice, it's actually very similar to other weapons with the ASL line going through the entirety of the HUD from top to bottom. We have the ranging right here 20 miles to the top and zero at the bottom right there the range bracket which shows us the maximum range minimum range and anything in between that is inside the range and finally the carrot which is visually showing us where we are on the range and the number next to it which is showing us the amount of miles to the target also indicated at the bottom here much like other weapons, we just need to fly the ASL, which means making it go through our flight path vector, and launch when in range. Now with Mavericks, there's this thing to keep in mind, that even when it shows you that you're in range here, it just means that the missile can get there. But the Maverick sensor can only lock on targets that are 7, maybe 8 miles out. If you try to lock them at even 10, which should be in range here, it's going to fail to lock, and I'll show you that in a second. Getting close to 10, let's just uh, quickly find a target with the targeting pod, so it with display management switch. I'll also switch to white hot, and there we go, we have a nice tank sitting right there. Let me put the cursor on it, and as you can see, we're at 10 miles out. Let me now try and lock him up, and I have handoff set to auto, which means it will automatically tell the Maverick to also lock on. One second, uh, let's soy the Maverick, and you can either press the FOV button right here to zoom in, or use the expand slash FOV button on your HOTAS. Now, back to the TGP. If I try to press target management switch up to lock, it will tell the Maverick to also lock. So I'm pressing it can see handoff in progress and it failed to lock. Even though I'm in range for the missile, it doesn't mean that the sensor is capable of locking that far. So I'll press target management switch down and now I'm ready to try again once in range. So let's fly deeper in. Now 8 miles out, it should be good. Let's try target management switch up with the TGP soid. Handoff in progress, and there we go, shaking reticles indicating a valid lock. So, I can actually launch right now, it should be fine, but what I will do instead is slightly pitch the nose down to get that target inside my HUD. As you can see, that I can actually see it through the HUD. 
and only then press the weapon release rifle rifle is the radio call for shooting mavericks pitching the nose down slightly like that will help the maverick go down towards the target if you don't do it in some cases usually when very close to the target you might notice that the Mavic just skips over the target because he just wasn't able to turn downwards quickly enough. Now let's just wait for this hit. Should be any second now. And Sha, good kill on the tank. Just like most other weapons, I usually recommend turning back at at least 10 to 15 miles out. And with Mavericks this is even more so because they have this little bit of standoff range. So I definitely recommend when you just start out to wait at least 15 miles out before you turn back for another shot. While I'm waiting for these 15 miles, let's switch to the hotel variant by going to the SMS page and pressing right here AGM 65 Hotel. And station 7 marked right here, go back to the TGP. And 15 miles out, let's turn back in. As we're turning back in, let me just explain something. When you're carrying the same kind of Maverick on each wing, unlike now, the system will automatically alternate between each of the stations every time you shoot. That means you're not gonna end up with zero Mavericks on one side and still three of them on the other. This can cause extreme balancing issues and you need and you needing to add a lot of trim and fighting the aircraft in many ways. But when you're carrying different kinds, like now, you do need to do it manually by switching between the deltas on the left and the hotels on the right. You can also just shoot all of them from one side, but it does mean that the aircraft will fly more weirdly. And we're flying into the target now. And Let's find a new one right here. Zoom in. And there we go, we have a nice target. Now I'll just wait again for eight to seven miles out. In the meantime, I can zoom in with the Maverick by sewing it and pressing expand slash FOV. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but I'm seeing a tiny little dot right there in the center of the reticles. And eight miles out, let's try and lock soy uh, is on the TGP target management switch up handoff in progress and it didn't give me an invalid lock nor a valid one I'm not sure if this is a bug or a feature of the TV guided Mavericks but they do not listen to the automatic or manual handoff so when you lock something up with the TGP you also need to soy them and press target management switch up to lock as you can see, it now has a valid lock indicated by the shaking reticle. I'll point downwards my nose slightly and weapon release. Rifle. And go back up. And good check. I'm again extending to 15 or at least 15 nautical miles out before turning back in. 15 miles turning back around and as I'm turning back around let's switch back to the deltas and for this final shot I want to show you the Maverick's ability to hit moving targets so I have these moving tanks right here and I want to get into the range of the Maverick sensor first before I lock them up otherwise it will not be able to in the meantime I'll soy the Maverick right here and zoom in Right, getting closer to the range, I'm just uh, following these tanks manually for now. Right, and 8, so I should be in range. Let's, uh, I'll move it onto the tank and press target management switch up. There we go, it's following him. And the Maverick is also following him. I will slightly point my nose down and rifle. And now the Maverick, because it's a fire and forget weapon, I don't need to guide it in like laser guided bombs. It's completely on its own following this tank until it hits. And there we go, good check. 
I'll now head back to base, so out of to ground mode, and my star arm off. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope this has been helpful. If it was, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. I'm so grateful for the insane amount of subscribers rolling in lately. Last time I checked it, it was just under 2000, and I don't know how much it's gonna be by the time this video is up. Thank you guys so much for this insane amount of support. It truly means the world to me. Stay tuned for the next weapons in this series. And as always, land safely.